Hello, everybody. I just wanted to record a short video to talk a little bit about how to import a um, uh, empirical networks into NetLogo. There's been a, several questions about this. Um, and first of all, let me say that there's really kind of two approaches you can take to this problem. The first would be to use the standard network extension. And I'll show you a little bit about how to do that. Um, and then the second that I actually wind up doing more often than not is kind of a roll your own or build it yourself kind of approach to how to import and export uh, network data. Um, and um, the reason why I do that is because it's simply more powerful, right? You have control over the file format. This works really well if you're going to be working with you know, other code that you're also going to be writing the import expert code for, right? So if you're going to, if you're planning to take your NetLogo code and directly dump it to something like Gephi or UCI Net or something like that, you may want to use kind of the standard network extension because it'll output in the right format. But if you're going to dump it to a data set and then you're going to get, analyze it in R, then you can kind of have full control over how you're going to read that data in on the, on, on the R side. Uh, and so you don't have to worry as much about these different file formats. Anyway, so that's the two different approaches. I'm going to demonstrate both of them quickly. Uh, and hopefully that'll give you a little insight of how to import um, your own empirical networks directly into NetLogo. Okay, so here we have our standard NetLogo window, as you can see. Um, this is for some code that I was working on looking at biases and customer um, service events, but we can use the same basic code. So let's just show off, first of all, how it even runs. We get set up. Um, it will then prompt you to ask you for the network because I have the network turned on. So we're going to open this uh, network.csv, right? And then it's going to, in this case, also prompt you for the genders because uh, we have this minority classification problem going on. So you can, you can see it reading in the data. Now, how did I do this? Well, if you go and you look at the actual code, and let me blow that up a little bit, make it bigger, right? Um, there's this check to see if I want to import the network or generate, if I do want to generate, then I'm going to use file, open user file. And what that allows us to do is it just opens a NetLogo file, a file into NetLogo, but allows the user of the agent-based model to select which one it is. I then, and I'll show you this format in a second, I then set it up so that the first um, line of the file is just the number of consumers. The reason why I did this is because it makes it a lot easier to kind of then process the data. If you don't know how many nodes are in your network right after the beginning, then you have to kind of like scan the whole data set to determine how many nodes there are and then go back and, and redo it, actually creating the network. Uh, by just making the number explicit at the top, I can then just create those number of consumers ahead of time and then connect them up. So you can see in this piece of code, right here that we're just creating the number of consumers that we just read for the file. After that, we're going to loop through each of the different turtles and we're going to give them an ID number. And this is going to help because those ID numbers are going to match directly with the ID numbers that are used in the file that I'm reading, which in this case is kind of a straight up edge list, right? Um, so what makes it easy then is after I do all that, then I can just loop through the file and every time I see a, a node connected to another node, I can just create a link from the first one, the A node to the B node, right? Um, and I, I, there's this little thing here, we're checking to make sure they're not the same because NetLogo doesn't support self loops, but then we can just ask the A node to create a link with the B node, right? Um, and we know that these are the right nodes because we already set up their IDs ahead of time. So we're just using those IDs. Um, and then from there, Right, we've now created the network. There is some code down here at the bottom that runs where we kind of distribute them randomly because they're going to show up clustered at first, set them all to red, um, kind of turn off the network. And then eventually, if we go down far enough, uh, we also just kind of lay the, the, the agents out a little bit so we can see them a little better. So that's why we see the pattern that we see here. Um, before I get too far, I need to tell you what the um, what the, the, the network structure looks like, like the, the actual file I'm reading in, so you understand better why it looks like the way it does. So I'm bringing that up right now. Uh, but essentially, the file format I defined, and it's totally up to you, is simply a 
a standard kind of edge list approach, right? So what it means is that each on each node, each line of the file, we just have a node and what it's connected to. So let me show you this real quick. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to make it a little bigger for you. There we go. So as I mentioned, you know, the first line is just the number of users, and then it's user A comma user B, and you can see like user zero is connected to user five twelve, etc. Now this is an undirected network, so we don't have to worry at all uh, about um, the direction of the connection ships, right? Like who's connected to you, but you could just assume that this is a directed network, right? That user U is zero, sorry, is connected to five twelve. Uh, but 512 is not connected to zero. Um, that would be fine. You just have to make sure you understand that when you're building these networks up from scratch. Um, so anyways, and then there's a whole bunch of those, as you can see. And the nice thing, again, like by having the number up here at the top, I can just say user zero is user connected to 512 because I already pay 150 users right off the bat. So that's the simple, that's, that's kind of easy way of creating your own um, network, uh, your own code to read in a network structure. Uh, but, you know, what if you wanted to read in kind of a standard network structure file format that's already out there? Well, that's also supported NetLogo. Um, there is something called the NetLogo extension, sorry, network extension for NetLogo, right? Um, and uh, it's right over here. So you should be able to see, right, the, the network extension code. It's in the, um, it's in the NetLogo users manual. Um, it has all the different information about how to create these networks and how to kind of work with them. Um, and the ones in particular, if you're looking at import, export are these ones right here, right? So. Those are uh, the network extension, uh, import and export codes. And I'll show you a little bit about how to use them. So if we go back over here uh, to the NetLogo screen, let me bring up a new model. So I took that uh, model that we were just looking at, the data that we were just looking at, where we had the, the, the network and the, the different genders assigned to the network entities. And I exported that from NetLogo as a matrix. And let me show you how I did that. So I actually took the exact same set of code. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's export network matrix. And all I did was say, save this matrix off to a user new file. What that format looks like then, once we um, then save that off, is it takes on in the matrix format is a full adjacency matrix. So basically the way that you read this is that user zero is connected to any place that there's a one on this, right? And then, and, and, and as you can see in this case, it looks like user zero might not be connected to anyone because there's a lot of zeros there. Uh, but if you scroll down far enough, I'm sure you'll find some ones, uh, right? Where they show the connections between the different nodes. Now. How do, we, how do we use that? So now that we have it exported in this matrix format, right? we can also import it in that matrix format as well. Let me uh, bring up the, um, let me bring up the, uh, the code for that. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so if we share this. Right, so this code, if you look back now, if you remember back to the first set of code I showed you, it had all that processing of that file. One of the nice things is if you use these built-in formats like adjacency matrices, or we're gonna show graph ML as well, you don't have to worry about it, right? Because um, about all that code uh, that does that because you just say load the matrix file because the NetLogo network extension, the NW colon load matrix format, already knows all that. So we can just load it in like that, right? Um, so if we then go back to the interface, we hit setup, it's gonna ask us where, what network to load in. We're gonna load in the network matrix that text, that exact one we were just looking at. And there you go, all 
right? And so now it's it's loading in. You notice it doesn't know about minorities or anything like that because the matrix is just an adjacency matrix. It just maintains uh, where people are. And in fact, I have to do a little bit of spring cleaning just to even make it red and have random co coordinates and to set the network layout. Now, you know, one final format I want to talk about, and there's, there's several other formats I'm not going to talk about here because they're similar. Um, if you go on the network documentation, you can see that there's file formats for DL, GDF, GEXF, GML, and VNA. Uh, but I'm going to talk about GraphML. GraphML is different than a lot of the other network formats in that it stores not just the network connections, but also the exact locations of the individuals. So that's nice in many respects because then if you have a picture of a network you want to save off, you can save it. So I saved the network already that I created using um, the original network code that was using the uh, edge list. And now I'm going to bring it back into a new network model uh, where we're going to use load graph ML. So let me show you that real quick. Um, and before I get there, let me show you what the, the graph ML format looks like. I can get this up and running. There we go. Okay. So first of all, let me just explain that the graph ML format is very, very different, right, than the others and that it uses a full XML file format. So it's, it's much more complex. This allows it to store a lot more metadata about like where each of the nodes is, what the edges are, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so then if you look at the, once I bring the graph ML format in, Right, you'll notice that I need to choose which one. I'm going to choose that network graph ML. And as you can see, it, you know, and I, I can't, it's hard to show, prove this to you, but this is exactly the same way it looked in the other network. Actually, this one probably looks a little different because I saved this one off earlier, right? But this one looks very similar to the way it looked. And it maintains all the status about green and red nodes. And in fact, if you were to inspect one of these, turtles, right, you would see that they have the same status variables that the other ones did, uh, that the one in the other model did. So if you want the most comprehensive way of saving off a network, GraphML is the way to go. If you want the most powerful way, right, then you should write the code yourself, right? And if you have a version that you need to work with another piece of software, then I would explore one of the other formats like matrix, DL, GDF, et cetera, right? Uh, and try and find one that works. So that's a quick tutorial about how to get your NetLogo models uh, to load empirical network data. Hopefully that's helpful.